So let's get into the flying geese. First, we're going to go over traditional method. This is how all our patterns are written because it requires no special tools. Um, I do, however, like to mark my pieces with our Pac-Man ruler, our Creative Grids non-slip multi-size six-inch flying geese 45 90 degree triangle. And so to do flying geese, you first take your square and you have to mark it. And normally they have you mark from point to point and just draw a line. But then you're only using little, two little points for reference. So I use the right angle part of the ruler and I align the top of the ruler with the square, the side of the ruler with the square, the three and a half inch line with the square, and um, just draw my quarter inch seam allowance. Um, so this is how you mark these. Then you lay it onto the rectangle, aligning this, the outer edges of both the square and the rectangle. And you sew from point to point, the line you've drawn is where your quarter inch foot goes. So your quarter inch foot edge would go on the line, you sew from point to point, and then you can flip this out. This is just like the flip and sew we did last week, but now we're using it for flying geese. So you do one side, you trim, and you press, and you have two options here. You can trim both layers away, or you can just cut out the center layer and leave this back layer as your guide. I tend to trim both layers because I'm, I'm all about getting rid of bulk in a quilt, but if you don't think this lined up properly, you can do that so you have that back edge to use as a guide. So that's the first wing. Then you do the same thing on the other side. And again, trim, press open. And how you can tell if your pieces are accurate is you need to have a quarter inch seam allowance from the point of the triangle to the edge of the squares. This part is more important than any other part because when you go to sew, you want your needle to hit right at the point of the triangle. That being said, if you're just starting out um, and you can hit, you can't hit on the triangle, try to hit above the triangle. It's less likely to be noticed than if you cut off the point of your triangle going lower. But if you mark your squares this way and sew them on, you should have a quarter inch there with no issues. So that's traditional flying geese. Now this is what this ruler is truly meant for. This is um, for making flying geese without having to mark squares. You just cut your pieces. So how you do that is for the flying, the, the goose part, you use this side of the ruler and you align, you'd cut three and a half inch strips for this guy because we want three and a half by six and a half finish. And um, so we're going to align the ruler with the three and a half inch line on the strip and cut. And that creates the body of the goose or the goose itself. Then we've got to cut our sky pieces. So you take another piece of three and a half inch strip fabric. And now this time what I like to do is keep them right sides together and cut two at a time, but they're going to be mirror image of each other. So that I, um, I've found it does not matter. I mean, you could put it like this or you could put it like this, but I like having a mirror. I don't know why, I just do. <laughs> so you can do it however, but I lay them up right sides together. I put the ruler on the strip, aligning the top, the side, and the three and a half inch line, and I cut. Now I have my two wings for this guy. And they go like that. So I have the blunt end at the bottom, the pointy end at the top. Um, like I said, I've done it both ways where the, you know, they could be exactly the same. It still works out fine. But um, for whatever reason, I feel like we need to do it this way. So then I align the blunt end with the cut triangle and I'm aligning this edge of the triangle and this edge of the triangle, the two triangles, and this should just fall where it's going to fall. Um, if you align the, the bulk of the triangles together, instead of saying, oh, I need to get this lower, but then it doesn't line up, you really want to line up the two triangles and not worry about the ends. The ends will work themselves out. Then you go ahead and you sew now this one I did it the other way, um, but you sew, you start here at the top and you sew your quarter inch seam and then you press this open 
And then once you've pressed that open, you lay the second one on, press that one open, and again, still need to have your quarter inch there and there, but you're not marking triangles. Um, you're cutting everything at once. You can cut multiples. That being said, the traditional method, if you mark the squares this way, out of out of these two methods is more accurate. This one is very, it's its good, it works. I've done this multiple times. I just finished a Halloween one and I cut everything. I didn't mark all my squares. So it really depends on how much time I have, how many half flying geese are in the quilt, and how big they are. The bigger they are, the more slush you have. If you're doing really tiny ones, I would mark them like this. If you're doing bigger ones like this, you can just cut them with the ruler the way the ruler is designed and have perfectly working flying geese, um, and if you're better sewer than me, yours are probably going to be much more accurate. But as you can see, that was done that way, and that looks spot on. So, those are the first two methods. The second method, or the third method, is cutting squares. So, let me get all my pieces here. So you need to cut your square, a lar one large square, four small squares, and then the large square we cut on both diagonals to get four flying geese bodies, or four flying geese, yeah, four flying geese bodies, and the little guys we cut on one diagonal, okay? And then you are just, this one is um, how you would do it if you really just want to be 100% sure that you're accurate. You would put this guy on here, you would sew it on, repeat, you get your finished piece, so here it is sewn on, here's the other one sewn on, and then you take this, and there's a ruler from Creative Grids, which we will have in the stores soon, they're on back order, I'm waiting for them. This is the Ultimate Flying Geese Ruler. Um, you could just use a regular ruler to trim these up, but this one makes it super accurate. So. On the ruler, and get you some white to look at. You just see the studio when I'm done with this classes. I've got pieces everywhere. <laughs> All right, so on this ruler, you have lots of sizes. It tells you, first of all, it tells you how big to cut it for the next two methods. This is the traditional cross cut method, and then I'm going to show you the heart method. Um, either of these can be done without the ruler. This just makes it much easier to trim it up. And um, I recommend if you do a lot of flying geese like me and you want to have them super accurate, this is another way to go. So first it gives you the finished size of your flying geese. In this case, we're doing a three by six. So my large square that I cut here is seven and three, sorry, seven and three quarters. And then I had to cut four small square. Oh, I'm doing a two and a half, two by four here, sorry. For the pattern, it's three by six. For my examples, I use two by four. So this is five and three quarters, and these are three and a quarter. Now you're gonna cut these no matter if you do this method or the next one I'm showing you. They're, they're both the same on here. So, and when you do it this way, you end up with four finished flying geese. So if you're not doing something scrappy, this works well. So there's your, ru your, your goose, and then you have on the ruler, says trim one, number one, and I'm doing a two inch by four inch flying geese, so if I just follow this up, I'm on D. So I lay D on, let me do it on the mat so you can see it. All these pieces out of the way. So I'm on D, I would lay D onto the body of the goose, which is this line right here, and I can trim the two sides. Then once I've trimmed those two sides, which is here, it's already trimmed. I can flip the goose and the ruler over, and now I'm using the D again, finding my centers, but now along with this V, we should also be aligning the side edges. And like I said earlier, the more points of reference you can use when you're trimming stuff, the more accurate your block will be. And then you would cut those two sides to end up with a perfect two and a half by four and a half inch flying goose. So where traditional method, there's no trimming, 
Um, you don't have to trim it so it goes faster, but you have to be more accurate in how you mark it. The same thing with the Pac-Man ruler method. You, these are accurate. You don't trim them up afterwards, but you have more room for um, some variation. This, you're making it bigger, cutting it smaller. So that's the traditional cross-cut way. And then the final way is the heart ruler way. And this way works awesome, especially if you're using a layer cake. Actually, both of these are great for layer cakes because you can get, there's no waste in either method. And um, you can get four perfect square, or flying geese out of it. So this one again, these are finishing at two and a half. So we're following the chart again. You're going to cut five and three quarters and then four of these guys that are three and a quarter. So that's step one. And the one thing I do have to say is that eight instructions. And if you happen to lose your instructions, they're online. You just go to the Creative Gribs USA website, say what ruler you have, and you can print them off. So everything I'm showing you today are in these ruler instructions. Um, and I can let you guys know when those come in if anyone is interested. So the, rule, the heart method is you lay this square on, or you lay this square down, then you put two square, you mar I still mark them. They tell you to, to just go from point to point and use your quarter inch um, foot like you do half square triangles, but I still mark them with my old ruler. I'm old school, I guess. Um, I lay this on here and I'm marking my sewing lines. Okay, doesn't tell you to do that. You don't have to do that, but that's what I do. So I'm marking it here to here and what I'm doing is telling showing you this you would be put your um, quarter inch foot edge on the center and you would sew here flip it over quarter inch foot and sew there I'm marking it you don't have to if you have uh, one of those creative grids clearly perfect not creative grids the clearly perfect angler I talked about having on your sewing machine but I want it to be accurate so I marked and then I pinned these two then you sew on this dotted line and you sew on this dotted line, so that's here, and that creates this um, unit. And then we're going to cut this unit from point to point. So there we go, we've cut it, that's it finished, we cut it. Now we take these and we're going to press these triangles up. So they kind of look like cat ears. So there's one unit. And there's the other unit. So we've cut them, pressed them open. Now on each of these units, we are going to place another one of our squares. Because remember, we cut four small squares for the one big square. And again, I marked them. And you line it up. That's the other reason I mark them is so I can see where I line it up. And you sew on from here to here. And you sew from here to here. Once you've done that, uh, there's the, so these are the two. Again, we're making four at a time. Then once I've done that, you can go ahead and you can cut these in half and that will get you that and that. So now I have four flying geese. And then we can go back to our trim ruler and use the trim ruler exactly like we did for the first method where you lay it on here, you find your measurements, you square up trim side number one, flip it over, flip the ruler over, and trim side number two. So of the four methods, the last two are the most accurate mainly because you are trimming up after you sew it. Um, of the piece methods, the traditional way with marked squares is the most accurate. So I've given you four different ways to do flying geese. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, make sure you like and subscribe below. You can find The Whimsical Workshop on our website, thewhimsicalworkshop.com, and that has all links to all of our other social media platforms. Thanks for joining us.